Coach Massey here from Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning, M2 Speed Strength and Performance, with another episode of Move Your Feet. And once again, break it down a little bit today, make it pretty informal. We're actually in here on Labor Day because it was important for us to answer a few emails. So I want to take a look at the first email that was sent in, and it says, Coaches Massey, meaning myself and Matt, I know you guys left off on some jump mechanic regressions. Could you please review them and also suggest sort of intra progressions? J minor MDP fit bar. Uh, well, Jay, excellent question, um, excellent inquiry, and I'm going to try to do my best to sort of interpret what that means. I believe we did leave off with some jump mechanic regressions because we had questions from a, a seminar we did, a webinar we did to perform better about people who may not be able to jump and kind of how to get them as close to jumping as possible. So we're going to do our best just to sort of have a little lab today, play around with a little lab today, um, review where we left off, and then do some really simple progressions, uh, which, you know, you guys probably know, man. You guys are all creative out there, but we're certainly going to assist those that send in emails. So I'm going to call in Coach Matt now, put my phone down. And uh, Coach Matt is here, and let's, let's review first things first. And we apologize if we may not be exactly on center point. But um, we talked about just looking at somebody's kinetic sequence first, and looking at what we call heel ball toe, toe ball heel, which is the progression of uh, the bottom portion of a jump. Certainly we have to understand that we have extension, and if you're preparing somebody uh, for a camp or a combine, where they have to do a vert test, it's, it's a different animal, right, Matt? We're going to go through a series of different progressions to make sure we add some height. But certainly, if you can't go heel, ball, toe, extend, push high, um, you're going to have an issue anyway. So, Matt, let's turn the side, let's face that way, through a sagittal view. Just show them the simple heel, ball, toe, toe, ball, heel. So, set down, set way down. So, you're going to try to find out what their jump depth is, depth is and he's going to go chest up. Now, go heel, ball, toe, and hold it and then toe ball heel back down and rest. That's also what we basically call the squat reach, except for the fact that we're taking them up to their toes and giving them an idea of what the bottom or baseline jump mechanics should look like. So that's one of, of the um, exercises or movements we looked at. It's super simple. It's not rocket science. Show them from the front mat so you show them you're not wandering. Try to split your crotch on the arms line. So, you know, pretty tall chest and go ahead, up, and then back down. And you see he's able to maintain his balance, which is supremely important also. And you want to take a look that when they're at the top, maximal extension, they're not veering left or right. So that was, that was the first thing we did. I think we brought the bench in after yeah. that, right? So let's put the bench somewhere right on this center line, and this way they have some perspective, okay? Then what we did is we said, okay, another one of our progressions in our movements, and especially if we're running sort of a jump mechanic session, uh, these people are going to actually, after they, they warm up, or, or as part of their dynamic warm up, they're going to float over to a station where they start the squat reach, and, and some people for a squat reach, they may just squat and they're going to come up and reach and they're not going to go onto their toes. If they're an older client, they don't have the balance. If you want to progress that for the more athletic clientele, squat, reach, extending, holding, then coming back down. So then we split it in half and said, okay, what can we do to help people understand what it is to really have that toe drive coming off the squat reach? So we went to the half mechanics, push, there you go, up. Now, here's the key. You want to, you want to understand that even though he's pushing off that toe, you don't want too much. You don't want him to veer too much. You don't want too much of an angle because you'll see a lot of this sometimes. And you can go back down. Unless you're teaching somebody to get to a specific point, which in some cases we do teach some of our volleyball athletes how to get over to a spot from a position of deficit. But purely for jumping mechanics, we're going to watch that he stays as close to being aligned on that center line as possible. And of course, it's a little off skew. So up he goes and he drives through that toe and then back down. So his elbow should sort of be in alignment with this line. And go, there you go, and then back down. Good. And you want to make sure all these drives coming off that grounded side, he has good ground engagement, he's pushing hard through 
his toe, and understanding the concept of ground reaction forces, okay? So now, super simple stuff. So, Jade, your question, how do we progress these movements? Or you said like an intra-progression, I guess before we even get up to really adding a ton of resistance. So, one of the ways we do it, now, don't crucify me here. I understand that bands decelerate at their end range, but the reason that we sometimes use bands is because we're trying to get a good visual to see if somebody's veering left or right and just giving them a little bit of progressive resistance even though it decelerates. So the first one, Matt, let's go with the one behind your neck. Yeah, behind the neck. So it's simple. Now, you know, we can have arguments all day whether or not this is the best thing ever, but what you do want to do is try to hobble, to turn a twist toward me, towards the camera real quick. I will tell you that even though this is not ideal, there are bar uh, mechanisms and setups that are sold out there that some people prefer, but this is a simple PB super band. Um, you want to make sure it's at least set up um, you know, on the outside part of the pectoral because you don't want this type of thing here because it's kind of dragging him down a bit and you would hope that um, his proprioceptors would correct him into standing taller, but let's just go with the benefit of we're trying to work this movement for what it's intended to be designed for efficacy in the jump. So from the front, and now yeah, I was just gonna say you may have we may have some funny occurrences where it comes whipping up because you know completely unadulterated, unrehearsed when we do these things. Because it's it's a part of this industry, it's a part of life. So he's got a good setup here. Um, he's gonna make sure he's got this adjusted at a V, like if he were wearing a shoulder holster or something. So Tall chest, sit back, and it's a simple squat reach with the toe drive. There we go, and then back down and up. Now, what you see here is, if this band looks like, it looks like it's consistent, has a consistent amount of space left to right and right to left, that's a good sign because if he loses consistency, or if this all of a sudden just snaps right down in the middle of his body, something is going incorrect in the kinetic sequence. All right, now try to kind of like hobble around to the side. There you go, that's good enough. Now, you can always have, have your athlete or client reset here, because I want it run, running along the outside of the pectoral, almost where it is underneath the armpit. And there are other ways to set this up, completely different situation for a completely different day. So, tall chest, and we'll get to that in a second. Down he goes, sets up, he drives, and he holds. And then back down, perfect. So that's the simplest progression. Now keep it under your toes and just take it. Also, uh, please don't get too hung up on the tall chest concept as, as a gospel term. Um, it really depends on how your client moves, how much anterior tilt you're going to require, and I've seen people sort of get stuck, um, I don't want to say in the mistake, but they get stuck in the concept of super tall chest to the point where somebody's set up so far back from their vertical line um, that they're on their heels so far back they're not really getting to the jump mechanic sequence quick enough to make a difference, especially when it comes to ground contact time. And that'll be a couple of episodes up from here when we start getting to how uh, really good takeoffs and landings lend to great ground contact time, or I should say lack of ground contact, right, because you want it quick. Okay, so now on this one, you're just gonna hook your thumbs. So Matt's gonna hook his thumbs, and he's going to try to uh, as closely imitate, imitate and mimic the squat reach with the toe drop. So go ahead. So he pulls it back and up he goes. Good. Now, what I like about this movement more so is a you can relax now. I'll, I'll keep them there all day. What I like more about this movement as opposed to the previous movement is I'm getting the extension here. And like I said, a few more videos down the road will probably get into the way we do some um, reverse hyper work that lends to the actual strength in the reach without compromising the length of the muscle. So we don't want to shorten up the QLs, but we certainly do want to have the concept of what reaching requires and extension even going a little bit backwards, especially when it comes to testing. So let's do that again, he hooks it. So I'm going to try to tell him, as you pull it, try to pull it across behind your waist. So find, there you go. You want them to find their crease, because you see that, that's a better setup. He has a little bit more tension now, It'll keep them honest, it, no valgus, we're clear, and go. Boom! Nice, and back down. And go. You almost hit me in the face. Okay, good, rest. 
so that's another progression jet. And uh, there's so many nuances to jump mechanics. I know guys that uh, categorize themselves and gals that categorize themselves as a jump mechanics specialist. Um, and if you are, you know, kudos to you because that's quite a claim to make in the sense that it, it requires a, a lot, a lot of study. So, so that's great. I'd love to hear from any of you guys that are. Kind of help me out. Let me learn something new also. So then we went to the half, right? So we showed you the half. Well, let's not do that yet. Let's, let's translate the band. Let's go with a sort of an X band look on this. So we're going to go under one toe and it crosses his head. So we're taking this half bench toe drive jump mechanics. He's going to put it over his head. Right? Well, let's do this. Put it right in the neck. So, and, and this is not the most comfortable thing ever. So here, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do this. Okay? Because I'm trying to get a little bit of an X like this. So I'll give it a shot. Boom. And reach. Okay, so what's nice about this is you see he has pretty good body control. That elbow line is almost center line. I know I'm a little bit off here. But this is a little bit more of a progression. Jay, I'm going to do it a little quicker. Let's see if it will hang with you. Ready? And again. And again. Boom. Good. Now, Matt, you see if you can adapt that to actually hold the band and get the reach with it. Okay? Go. Okay, let's start lower. Boom, up. Good. So as you can see, you're going to want to see this cross the sternum, up, across through the deltoid, up, and hands high. This is really, honestly, folks, to find your measurements. Think about all the vectors you have here now. That if you took a picture of this, you could start drawing vectors at its creases, at its transverse plane. You could start comparing the band to the line of bod behind him. So it's a really nice reference point. So this is a little bit more of, I guess, what Jay would call an intro, intro progression. So you can put that down. So as far as we're concerned, um, the flexible barbell is, is legitimately the ultimate progression because of the reactivity of the bar, the oscillation, the amplitude, the angle, defect, angle of deflection, um, and just the stability it requires to utilize the bar. So this is a simple one. Matt's going to put this uh, this, the smallest bar that they have in their repertoire there. It's a standard grip, okay? And this is a standard grip, and it can take up to 10, bar, 10 pounds per side. It's their SG20. If you can get your hands in a little closer, that's cool. Now, the only thing I don't like about backloading this with any type of bar is you lose the extension, right? You, you lose, not the hip extension, you lose the entire kinetic sequence extension. But we'll get to that in a later video also, how to make that happen. So Matt, if you show them what it looks like, and it's gonna be a quick snap. Now start lower. Now, snap. Now you see it's gonna battle them. Again, boom, snap. Perfect. So you're gonna also watch, as strange as this sounds, watch like where his knuckles are. You know, if you lose that horizon as he's jumping and he starts to dip or twist, you know you have a problem. And one more time. And hold. Good. I'm going to step off camera, off frame for one sec, and I'm going to pick up a different bar, which he really didn't plan for. But you know, then again, like I said, sometimes we don't plan for stuff. So this is an SG standard grip 50 bar, it takes up to 25 pounds per side. And here's where you have to get creative in utilizing these flexible barbells in the sense that you have to know where the threshold exists between it being more of a metabolic exercise, an actual kinetic sequencing exercise, a mechanic exercise, or a speed exercise. And all of that's fine, as long as you know where they intersect and what you're trying to accomplish in that given session. Go ahead, man, you see what we got? Right. And again, let's try to go quick here. Jump, jump, extend, jump, and rest. Oh boy. Okay, so obviously take that on off. You're no longer required for, for this episode. So, Jed, I hope I answered some of your questions. I, I hope I kind of got through what you were thinking about. You guys are creative, man. I know when I see you guys out and about, I, I learned so much, so many cool things and how, how you sort of adapt movements. And as long as it makes sense, and as long as you get an efficacy, and as long as you're making people get better, it's awesome. So we basically covered finding out if it's safe for somebody to jump, progressing through the kinetic sequence, getting all the way up and through a little bit of progressive resistance, and then into some biomechanical reactivity with the tsunami bars. So listen, I really appreciate your time. Until next time, 
My name is Coach Massey from Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning, M2 Speed Strength and Performance. Greatness is forged and not fabricated. That's your day.